So we've kind of touched on the physical here a bit. Now we're going to go into more about the etheric side, the emotional side, the mental side we will also touch on. But the etheric side is the side that um, is the side you want to put your attention upon, you see. Because within the etheric side of the sexual act is the actual condoning within yourself that you are an emanation from eminence, as we stress so strongly. One might say you are God, or you are God material, or God stuff, whatever the human wants to use as the words there, you see. And what you are actually saying is that your being is acting in the same form that the originating principle acted when the original manifestation began. So there is, using words here, because we must use words to convey this message to you, there is this idea that the eminence, the source of all, began to have a thought, if you would, within its mind, using these words just generally now, that it was going to create. And as it did, it extended out from itself the material that would create everything, not just the humans, but everything that exists. So if you want to think about that as the extension of the male out into the female, so to speak, out into the void, out into the uh, opening of the female, if you want to see the extension of the male into the female, then you see <clears throat> eminence extending itself into the void, into the nothingness, so to speak, to bring about creation. So when the etheric slash spiritual idea of creating a being is taken into account, or simply if you don't want to have a child or <clears throat> are in a relationship that is not going to include children, whatever your reason is, it is not a matter of right or wrong, there is no judgment here. When you begin this act, what you are doing is creating a sense of godliness between the two of you. And then as you step down in frequency, so to speak, you begin into the principles of the divine feminine, the divine masculine, the two aspects making up the one eminence. And this is, of course, uh, sort of a connotation about what the energy can do and how the energy is and what it can be. And as this happens over and over again, you go from that to the feminine principle, the, div the divine masculine principle, you go to the masculine feminine and it becomes more solid and more solid and more solid and more concrete and lower and lower in frequency. And by lower we don't mean bad, we just mean in less um, of a of agitated frequency. So the principle of the divine feminine, the principle of the divine masculine have created the mother, father, God, have created the two aspects within the mind of the humans that there is a male and a female principle that has have created. And when you use this symbology, when you use this um, archetype, then you have two people who are making love with each other, who are honoring God in the other person and bringing about such a strength and um, perfection in the underpinning of that which they are that there is no way that they are going to um, divide the act away from the sacredness of what is happening. So there is consideration being taken here of the actual presence of them, source, male source, female source, combining in the oneness and bringing about this sense of the perfection of that oneness in a way that is going to create a moment when they do not know separation. So this then takes you into the mental and um, emotional intentions of the two. And this is where we're going to get back into the real nuts and bolts of what's happening here. Because you see, as the emotions of the two are uh, literally emoting from the feelings that they do or do not have for each other, that is creating the colors that you are talking about. That is creating the depth of the essence that they share. So when you have a mindset between the two, that there is love and there is caring, and the two beings come together in this act of, uh, of emanation, uh, emanating their Godhead, their source, with each other, then the feeling that they have as they do this creates an emoting, an emotion, that is a vibrant, we can't even begin to describe the color that is present. It is like a, um, 
fluorescent, opalescent white with every color that you can possibly imagine in it that emanates from the two of them, not just from the sexual chakras, but from the actual points of the center of each of their cells, their DNA, and the cellular memory of each one begins to reawaken to that moment when the eminence said, let it be, this is going to be now. So in that moment, if there is true intention of caring and love and well-being, the two for each other. And this is not about the orgasm. Sometimes we like to call it the roargasm, you know. It is like there is such a, a, an emphasis placed upon the roargasm. There's a big roar about it that each of them must have a so, certain amount of pleasure in this act or it has not been successful. It is not about that at all. It is much more about the stillness that occurs when the two are becoming one in this physical act and the intention with which they started out. And that is the part that is important. It is the intention that is the piece that you want to pay attention to. So there can be two people who are married, who seem to be caring for each other, who are having what appears to be this delightful life, and yet when they go into their bedchamber together and they begin to unite in this way, that something is not intended in the way that it was originally intended and so then there, there is a difference in what uh, transpires between them from the standpoint of the colors from the standpoint of the um, literal depth of the information and we were talking about the information of the male coming the wisdom coming into the female etc and the female sharing her wisdom with the male through her own lubrication the two join together in that way when there is when there is not the intention of full embracement, when there is not the intention of full loving and caring and coming together totally, then the, there is not the same amount of wisdom. It is like the, the cells in the DNA, they, can, they contract, they constrict. And so there is not the same amount of um, essence, as you would, that is prevalent within the uh, discharge itself that is able to merge within the two of them. In other words, they cannot become as one as they possibly could um, due to the fact that they are not experiencing oneness in their intention, in their emotions, their feelings, and their mind. Their physical body is acting like they're, they are one, but the rest is not. So this is something to be very um, attentive to, and it's important to keep in your mind. So just kind of encapsulating here a little bit for you so that you understand what we are talking about in a deeper frame is that what is happening right now in your culture, in all of the cultures that are in the planet right now that are not... Um, belonging to specific religions like for instance Hindu or Muslim or something of that nature but basically the Western world type of cultures what is happening is that there is a um, almost a movement away from the actual sexual act as a means of reminding yourself that you are God and either it becoming something that is just done for fun and as many times as possible for fun or something that is restricted, something that is held back and said, used as, as a power tool.